Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things, and today let's talk about John McGregor. So back in the spring I said that I was going to do a few author spotlights on my three favourite living authors who are Emily Sinjin Mandel, author of Station Eleven, Banani Oshimoto, author of Kitchen, and John McGregor, author of If Nobody Speaks of Remarkable Things and Reservoir 13, among others, of course. I made my videos on Banani Oshimoto and Emily Sinjin Mandel many, many months ago, but it's taken me quite a while to get to the John McGregor video, partly because I knew he had a new book coming out and it took me a while to get to that new book. But I have now read all of John McGregor's five published books, so I thought today I would have a chat about him because he is definitely one of my favourite living authors. So I first discovered John McGregor a few years ago in autumn 2014, I think, when I was on my master's course, and I absolutely fell in love with his writing from the beginning. I think he is an incredible author with five brilliant, brilliant books, and I would highly recommend him. I think he is an acquired taste. I wouldn't recommend him for everyone. I think, whereas an author like Emily Sinden Mandel, I, I can't see anything objectionable about her. I can understand why people wouldn't like John McGregor. I can understand why he's not everyone's cup of tea, but he is very much mine. So what I thought I would do is talk about a few things that I love about John McGregor's books as a whole, and then go through his five books in order from my least favourite to my favourite, and talk a little bit about what they're about and why I love them all. They are all like five star books for me, I love them all, but I still have like an order within their love, so anyway. The first thing I love about John McGregor is just his writing. I think he is an incredible writer, and there aren't that many authors that I love purely because of the way that they write and the way that they use language, but John McGregor for me is one of them, and one of the writers who is so incredible, and I think it's partly because I first read him while I was doing my creative writing masters. One of my tutors on my course recommended If Nobody Speaks of Remarkable Things to me, and I read it and just was amazed. And it was a time when I was thinking about writing a lot and thinking about the craft of sentences and stuff like that. Reading John McGregor kind of amazed me, a bit like Angela Carter did, I think, when I first read her, in the way that authors can use language and the different things they can do with it, which can be really, really startling. And I think one of the reasons why If Nobody Speaks of Remarkable Things is my favourite book by him is because it's the one I first read, and I was so amazed by his language and the way that he uses words, especially because he is slightly experimental. One of the reasons why I say he's not for everyone is because his writing is a bit more experimental. For example, he doesn't use speech marks in If Nobody Speaks of Remarkable Things. None of the characters are named. They're all referred to by a particular aspect about their appearance or their character or where they live. I'd read experimental books before and I'd never liked them. And he was the first writer that I'd read at that point for a long time who did weird things with language and structure and form that I liked. I'd read Stream of Consciousness books before, like Will Self's Umbrella, and just hated it because I didn't know what the hell was going on. But John McGregor, who is experimental but not Stream of Consciousness, I think he's doing something slightly different to that. His writing for me was accessible in that I could follow it, I knew what was happening, I understood, I got it, but also beautiful and different and interesting and experimental in a way that was kind of awesome. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I love his books, because I think his writing is just wonderful and immense and, and fascinating, and because he can put such poignancy and power into small moments. And that, in fact, is probably the second thing that I love a lot about John McGregor, and that is how emotionally impactful I find his books, because there are lots of moments, like his books have made me cry a lot, and there are lots of moments that really shouldn't have made me cry, that if any other author wrote would not have made me cry. For example, in Reservoir 13, his most recent book, there is a bit which made me cry, which, like, literally all that happens in the scene is a man and his wife sit and watch TV with their two children. Like, that's all that happens, and I sobbed. Like, no one should have that power of writing! In his short story collection, this isn't the sort of thing that happens to someone like you. The first story is, I think, two pages, and barely anything happens. And again, it made me cry. Like, he has this amazing power with words to write such poignant moments and capture them so perfectly and so humanly, I suppose, that they just move me so deeply, and that's one of the other things I definitely love about his books. And the third thing I wanted to talk about that I love about his books, which again ties into the writing and also the emotional impact, is the way that he captures the beauty of everyday, normal events and moments and lives. That is partly what If Nobody Speaks of Remarkable Things is all about, like, that's what the title refers to. It's the remarkable things that you don't realise are remarkable, and it's a book about 
remarkable moments in everyday ordinary lives and that's why I love it and a lot of his books are about that I would say probably all of them apart from possibly even the dogs um, which is slightly different I would say the other four deal a lot with the beauty of everyday moments and the emotional impact and the importance and the significance of what feels and looks from the outside unremarkable but isn't and I love how he writes in a way that can make ordinary situations different and therefore slightly removed and alien which makes you look at them differently and therefore understand them in different ways for example in if nobody speaks of remarkable things there are like two pages where he literally describes rain for two pages and i have never read like a more beautiful two pages because he describes rain in a way that others rain and therefore it becomes not ordinary but something beautiful and incredible because there's water falling from the sky it's like isn't that actually weird when you think about it isn't that a strange and quite exciting impressive thing that happens which you don't normally think about I want to talk about the way he does characterization or more specifically I think I want to talk about inter-character relationships because that's one of the things I think he does so well not only does he build these impressive brilliant fully fledged characters but the way he describes the relationships between people are perfect and many of his books are I would say about community. If Nobody Speaks of Remarkable Things is about how one incident affects people who all live on the same street. Reservoir 13 is about a small village and how it changes over time. Even the dogs is about a group of homeless people and the relationships between them. So Many Ways to Begin is about the relationship between a husband and wife and the way that he describes relationships, especially the way that he describes sort of bigger communities, I think is so fantastic and so well done and captures the complexities of human interaction really, really well. And it's something I really, really love about his books. Not only is his writing beautiful, but his characters and the relationships between them feel real. People are not isolated or when they feel isolated they're also not. It examines so cleverly the way that people work in different situations and in different environments and that's something I really really love about his books. There are a lot of other things I love about his books of course. I love how he examines not a dramatic event but the aftermath because that's what I'm more interested in to be honest. That's what I find more exciting and more curious is the aftermath of a dramatic event rather than the actual thing and both If Nobody Speaks of Remarkable Things and Reservoir 13 are about that. In fact even the dog is about that too. All three of them really deal with the aftermath of events. I really like the way he deals with cause and effect I suppose in that way and how he examines not the thing that you might think would be the interesting bit but the stuff that comes after what you might think would be the interesting bit and is actually more interesting than what you might think would be the interesting bit. I love the subtle beauty and amazingness of his writing. I love the way he uses landscape and the way he talks about places, especially rural landscapes, which I'm not familiar with, but which he somehow makes so real to me. I love the way he deals with important subject matters in such a careful and brilliant way. And I just love his books a lot, a lot. So. Yes, let's talk about the five books by John McGregor. My least favourite book by John McGregor is probably that isn't the sort of thing that happens to someone like you. Not because it's not good, I think it's great. Like I said, all of his books are five star reads to me and I love them all very much, but this is his short story collection and I think there are some stories in here I adore and there are some stories I don't love so much or didn't get that much out of. And there are a few short stories in here where I think he uses structure a little too experimentally to the detriment of the plot. The stories are all set in different small towns and villages in Lincolnshire and the way that he explores the rural landscapes and the communities here and the effect that the isolation of some of these places have on the people is really really interesting. There are some beautiful incredible stories in here that I love. The first story, That Colour, is possibly my favourite story in the collection and that's the two-page story I referred to that made me cry in like two pages. I don't I don't know how he does it. He writes wonderfully. I would definitely recommend this. I wouldn't necessarily say this is the place to start with John McGregor because some of the short stories in this are more experimental than his novels and therefore it might put you off but I would still highly recommend it. I don't love all of the stories but there are some absolutely brilliant incredible ones in here and it is like all of his books a wonderful read. Next I want to talk about Even the Dogs. I sometimes go so far as to think that Even the Dogs might be John McGregor's best book. It is not my favourite, I think because the subject matter is so difficult that I have read it once and I quite like to reread it but I'm also aware that I think I would find it very very hard to reread and that despite being very very small it is incredibly hard hitting and powerful and not not a happy read. There isn't as much beauty in this book as there is in the rest which is natural because of the subject matter but although it is an absolute masterpiece it means I don't love it quite as much as the other of his three novels. Even the Dogs deals extensively with people who are homeless. It focuses around 
the aftermath of the death of a man who had been squatting in a flat that he used to own but no longer had any right to and what happens after he's dead and how the people around him, his friends and his family, many of whom are homeless, many of whom are addicted to drugs, react to his death and it's just it is incredibly hard-hitting, it's a very difficult read, but it is astounding and it is important and it is brilliant and so emotionally impactful and just incredibly written. And I think that the way John McGregor writes lends itself so well to the emotional torment and power of this book, especially to the way that one of the main characters, Danny, feels about life and the mental strain that's going on in his head. It is a difficult book and a shocking one, but it's also incredibly powerful, incredibly brilliant and absolutely worth your time. Next, so many ways to begin. This is about a man called David who is a museum curator and this book is a kind of curation of his life. He's looking back on his life, especially his relationship with his family. He was adopted and didn't find this out for a long time and also his relationship with his wife. The book is structured through a series of objects going chronologically through his life from the beginning to where he is now. There are so many things I love about this book. I think the relationship between David and Eleanor is so brilliantly portrayed and the exploration of Eleanor's problems with mental health and David's discontent with his life I think are really really good and really nicely handled because it paints such a complicated portrait of a couple who love each other but have so many struggles and difficulties in their life beyond that 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 is often not enough and I think there are so many beautiful beautifully written moments in here I think it is a wonderful wonderful book I love the way it explores history and museums and the impact of physical objects and memory his writing is wonderful but yes on to the next book my second favourite John McGregor is probably his newest one, Reservoir 13. Reservoir 13 is his newest book. It came out in April this year, I believe, and it was also long listed for the Man Booker Prize. Reservoir 13 is a really interesting book and one that I loved. And I, I kind of wonder if I loved it more or slightly less because of its similarities to If Nobody Speaks of Remarkable Things. It is the most similar in structure and form in what it's trying to do to If Nobody Speaks of Remarkable Things. And if you do love If Nobody Speaks of Remarkable Things, you will probably love Reservoir 13 as well. Reservoir 13 follows one rural English village after the disappearance of a 13 year old girl and it follows this village in the 13 years that follow this girl's disappearance. It's not a thriller, it's not about this girl's disappearance, it's about the shadow that leaves over these people and it's about the connections and the community within this village and I loved it because it's written quite oddly. It's really, really zoomed out. Every chapter is a year. This covers 13 years and it kind of covers everything in those 13 years, but at a massive distance. You sweep through so many characters in one paragraph and every now and then you'll zoom in and get a little close up and then you'll zoom back out again to this overarching narrative. As you watch these people grow over 13 years, as you watch children grow up and get careers and jobs, go to university, move away, as you watch people get divorced, get married, have children. It's basically just following the lives of ordinary people in an ordinary place over 13 years, but an ordinary place that has had one extraordinary thing happen to it. And it's such a fascinating book in terms of exploring community, in terms of exploring ordinary lives, of familiar relationships, in terms of exploring places, especially many of these small rural communities that people tend to leave because there aren't many jobs there that are often struggling economically. There are so many fascinating themes dealt with in this book and I love it very, very much. I almost love it as much as if nobody speaks of remarkable things, but there are two reasons why I don't love it quite as much. One is that there is no ending to this book because it just follows the lives of these people and it follows this village. Although it ends 13 years after and that's symbolic because of the title is Reservoir 13, but it kind of could go on longer or it could have kind of stopped earlier. And I love the reading experience, but I didn't find the ending as satisfying, as amazingly satisfying as I found the ending as if nobody speaks of remarkable things. And also, while I love the narrative technique of having that zoomed out examination of all of these characters' lives, I don't think you always get the close emotional impact of being in a character's head, which you do in If Nobody Speaks of Remarkable Things. So that should probably lead me on to talk about If Nobody Speaks of Remarkable Things. I feel like I've been talking about this all video anyway because it is my favourite book by him and it's one of my favourite books of all time. It's possibly my third favourite contemporary novel after 
The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setchfield and The Lola Quartet by Emily Sinden Mandel. It might be tied with The Lola Quartet, I don't know. I'm gonna have to reread this at some point in the future and I'm slightly scared to reread it because I do kind of know that one of the reasons why I loved it so much the first time was because I was staggered by John McGregor's writing and I know what his writing is like now so while I'm still impressed I'm gonna be less staggered but I also would like to reread it to experience the glory that is this book because I think it is incredible and wonderful and I would highly highly recommend it. I know it's also one of the favourite books of Olivia Pope if you don't know her channel I will link it down below because she's another big John McGregor fan and I know she's also said she'd quite like to reread it and is also a bit scared. This book amazed me the first time I read it and it still amazes me when I think about it. I think it's such a brilliant and incredible and wonderful 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 book. So what is If Nobody Speaks of Remarkable Things about? It is about the prelude and the aftermath of an event. We find out at the very beginning that something has happened on this street and then for the rest of the book we get a dual narrative. Half of the story is in third person Person telling us about what's going on on this street. We follow all of the people that live on this street. None of them are named. They are identified by the place that they live or by something about them. So it'll be the person from number 13, the boy with the square glasses or something like that. And yet somehow you still know who everyone is. It's, oh, it's masterful. It's just masterful. But the other half of the book is looking back from the perspective of a young woman who was a student and lived on the street at the time of this event. And she's looking back on it for many years in the future and also dealing with everything that's going on in the present. So it kind of works forwards towards the event and backwards towards the event in just like all of the best ways and the book is so satisfying and brilliant. I think one of the reasons why this beats Reservoir 13 is because of that first person very focused second narrative that means you have such a strong hold on one character's head so even in the street sections when you're following a lot of different characters you know this one character who you will have such a close emotional connection with. The ending of this it is incredible and so satisfying. Um, it's such a powerful book, it's so beautifully beautifully written, it's so important in what it's about because it is about the beauty of everyday moments and it is about the significance significance of things that seem insignificant and that makes me very very happy because I think that's a great thing to explore in writing. It's hard for me to explain all of the reasons why I love this book and just what a hold it has on my heart but I think like I said because I I read it having not read a book like this before and because I read it when I was doing a creative writing masters and to see the power of language and the way he uses it in this book in like all the most amazing ways is just great. It's so good and the fact that he doesn't name a single character and yet you know everyone. Like I remember characters from this book more vividly than I remember characters from a lot of other books who are all named and that's just, that's wonderful isn't it? It shows I think his power of language and the poignancy and emotional impact of this book. It is a book about the remarkable nature of everyday normal life and about the relationships between people and the power that has and I just I think it's utterly incredible and I, I cannot recommend it enough. John McGregor is definitely a very very amazing author and one I would highly highly recommend. Thank you very much for watching, I think that is all I have to say. As I have said I'm very very fond of John McGregor, he is absolutely one of my favourite authors and I think he is an incredibly talented writer. Please let me know down in the comments if you have read any John McGregor and what you thought of him and if you'd like to read more by him and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.